they can't go to the local chip shop without running the risk of a battering by some cabinet or shadow cabinet member. It even means there's no escape at home. Michael Crick reports now on the dangers of being thought a winnable voter. Shall I serve you? Yeah. And what would you like? Tony Blair out campaigning this week and seizing the opportunity to prove his critics wrong. And what about your tomato sauce? Yes, please. You got any of that <laughs> The Labour leader showing that, yes, if needs be, he could run a chip shop. See, tell, tell me if I'm being too generous. Actually, Do you know the Conservative candidate, Les Byram? Les Byram, nice to see you. Contenders to become South Wirral's next MP know they may only serve in Parliament for a matter of weeks, if not days. But the parties appreciate that a good result here would be an important morale booster. Hence the succession of star names and lesser figures sent to South Wirral over the last few days. Large parts of this seat, especially those overlooking the D estuary, look like the affluent home counties. And Labour will have to make serious inroads into this middle-class Tory territory to add to its natural heartland on the other side of the peninsula, down by the River Mersey. But will Labour even get a chance? When the Conservative chairman Brian Mulwiney came this week, he refused to scotch suggestions that if Tory support starts to hemorrhage badly, they may abandon the by-election altogether and call a general election instead. Can you guarantee there will be a by-election on the 27th of February? Well, that's what my plan is, and that's why I'm here, that's why cabinet ministers are here, and that's why cabinet ministers will be here again next week. Can you assure us it will happen on the 27th? I've just answered the question. No, you haven't. Yeah, but yes, I have. You said that's your plan. That's right. It but is my plan. Can you guarantee it will happen? Well, that's the answer that you've, you've had. The Prime Minister will set a date for the general election. We will be ready whenever he sets that. But I am running this uh, with a view to having a by-election on the 27th. Behind the official party shop fronts of this by-election, the ministerial visits, the walkabouts and photo opportunities, lies a more hidden aspect of the campaign that the party managers, quite frankly, would probably prefer it if we didn't discuss or explore. And that's the increasingly sophisticated use of American marketing techniques. First to identify and then to focus upon a key group of voters in this constituency whom the parties believe will determine the outcome of this campaign. Yeah, I'm just calling from the, um, the local Labour Party. I'm calling because we want to identify people's voting intentions at the forthcoming by-election. Labour activists canvassing. Not the traditional door-to-door -door method, but from a phone bank at the party headquarters. Each canvasser reads from a structured script. And whereas until the last election, Labour was largely interested in whether people were for or against, now it's more complicated, and they're put into one of 15 different categories. So you won't be voting Conservative, but you haven't made up your mind? Come on, pussy. Come on. This couple are a good illustration. When Labour first rang them five weeks ago, Cliff Whitehall told them he'd been Conservative before, but now was definitely Labour. And that was the last he heard from them but Mary Whitehall indicated slight doubts. So Labour persisted with her, partly with letters. Directed to me personally, I'd say at least four, and at least four or five telephone calls. The, I mean, they, they obviously think you're a bit wobbly. Perhaps so, but I don't think, well, I don't consider myself wobbly. It was purely that I was definitely going to vote Labour this time, which I don't normally vote. But I just had this leaning towards the, the Liberals. And astonishingly, while we were there, came yet another call from Labour. It was to firm up arrangements.